feel full already. Not physically full, but full in other ways. But right now, we're going to be heading over to the kitchen with our guest chef, Patrina. Now, if you don't know Patrina, if you haven't seen Patrina before, Patrina is at is an, she's an actual hero without the cape, but she deserves a cape because she is able to give us healthy meals that, that, let's be honest, when we think about healthy meals, we don't think of it in the most glamorous light. But I promise you, when you taste Petrina's meals, it adds the glamour to it. So without further ado, we're going to head over into the kitchen to Petrina. And Petrina, what is it that you are creating for us today? Hello, everyone. So today we're going to be cooking a fish Caesar salad. Wow. Normally when you order Caesar salad at restaurants, it's normally with chicken. Mm -hmm. Or if you're you know, vegetarian or vegan, then you can do the vegan or vegetarian version. Mm -hmm. So I thought today I'll just be a bit uh, more creative and do it with fish. Amazing. Amazing. In that, is there a particular type of fish that we should be using well, the, for the, Caesar salad? The, the fish that I've uh, chosen is actually salmon because salmon is a bit uh, harder. In, in that sense. Okay. So uh, you, you can choose whatever fish that the, you, you want as well. Ah, amazing. So if you just walk us through the basics of Caesar salad, so what is usually the basic ingredients that we can expect to see? Well, well funny enough, a lot of people think that uh, Caesar salad was named after Julius Caesar, but it's actually <laughs> not. It was actually named after a chef uh, called Caesar as well. Yes. And uh, he was, I think it was in the 1920s, if you mm -hmm. check it out. He was a chef, he's an Italian chef who was living in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the thing behind the Caesar salad was basically, you know, they were short of ingredients at the time. Mm -hmm. And they just actually threw whatever they had available in the kitchen, which mm -hmm. is how I love to cook as well, because yeah. I normally choose a, a recipe and then I see what's available in the house and the kitchen and I just go for it. Yeah, yeah, same. As a mum of four children, whatever is available, is what we're going to make a masterpiece out of. And can I just say, what a masterpiece that, that Caesar or Julius had created, because I actually love Caesar salad so much. Like I would eat Caesar salad over every other meal. So I'm really intrigued to see how Petrina incorporates fish into that. So I'm gonna leave it over to you, Chef Petrina. Okay, so what I've done is I've got my olive oil here, which is uh, infused in a bit of chili and a bit of spices. That's olive oil here. Now, a lot of people, they ask like how many, how much olive oil, it really depends on how, how big your pan is. So it depends on that. It, th this one's about three tablespoons. And I've got my fish here. When I bought the fish yesterday, it was actually uh, already seasoned with a bit of chili and a uh, bit of spices. So I'm gonna add some chopped, um, chopped onions as well and shallots as well and a bit of ginger. So you know, I like my ginger as well. And together with salad, I've actually also got some halloumi cheese. The halloumi cheese is actually a bit of harder cheese. And this halloumi cheese is actually made more from goats and sheep's milk uh, or, or dairy. The reason why I've chosen that is because a lot of people, they are actually sort of like lactose intolerant and they are not so, so into taking cow's dairy properly. So you can actually have the sheep's or the goat's uh, choice as well. And I've made my own crotons. You can actually buy uh, pre-made croutons on, from the shop. But this one I actually bought a, a, a nice uh, sort of like a dinner roll yesterday made from rye type uh, flour. And I've actually just cut them into very small bite-sized pieces. You can see like that. And I've actually put it in the oven for a few minutes just to make it crispy. And that's your homemade croutons basically. And Amazing. what I'm going to do for the dressing is more, instead of doing like a proper dressing with balsamic vinegar and all that, I've actually got some hummus. And that, that's going to add to the flavour as well. Hummus is made from uh, chickpeas and a bit of lemon oil as well. And I've got some mushrooms here, chestnut mushrooms. I normally like to buy the, the, the brown ones because they are not more nutritious. As you can see, normally when it comes to having more colours in the food, that will actually make, it, make the meal more nutritious itself. And I'm going to add some olives as well. Olives and these are mint, which I've just cut early this morning from my garden organic garden, so it's a bit of mint, just give flavour. And for the salad, I've actually got this multicoloured uh, different leaves. You can see there's spinach here, there's the purple leaf uh, lettuce, there's the, there's, there's the normal, normal lettuce itself, greenish ones, and a bit of spinach, and this is the uh, sort of like baby uh, Swiss chard itself. And I'm going to add a bit of cucumber as well, cucumber, carrots, and the coarse lettuce, which is the main lettuce that's used for the Caesar salad. So those are all my ingredients. I'm going to heat up the, the, 
the stove at the moment and we'll just heat up the pot. Now, Chef Petrina, I know they usually say that when it comes to the bread, the staler the bread, the better. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's true? The staler the bread, well, I actually bought this uh, loaf just yesterday, so oh. it's actually quite fresh. Okay. And well. I've actually just heated <laughs> it up, so uh, I've actually just put it in the oven for a few minutes just okay. to make it crisp, and th yeah. that's basically it. So it doesn't oh, have, really have to be stale bread. Okay. Yeah. And the reason why I've not actually bought like the normal uh, croutons that you get ready made from the shop is because it's normally made from white bread. Ah. And as you know, I've explained before, white bread is actually not the healthiest yeah. of breads. Yeah. So yeah, we'll just wait for the pan to heat up a bit. And while waiting, I'm just going to uh, cut, chop off the ginger. Ginger will be like sliced really finely. So when you introduce uh, ginger to your fussy eaters or fussy eaters in the family, then it's really actually nice to actually just have it really fine yeah. so that they don't really notice or taste it too much. Mm -hmm. So just chop it up like that. Ginger is a very good uh, for for managing things like um, you know sickness, mo motion sickness, uh, nausea, things like that. So if you've got any anything like that while you're traveling or you know w while you're at home when you're feeling a bit nauseous for whatever reason, then uh, do a bit of like fresh ginger tea. And ginger is not expensive, so you, you can always actually store it in the house. So we, we always have ginger in the kitchen. Some, some of the basic things we always have in the kitchen anyway. Yeah. So this is the shallot which I'm cutting, which gives a nice flavour as well to the fish. So now that the pan's heated up, I'm just going to add the oil in. Let's see. And what oil are you using? Is that olive oil? Or? Yeah, this is olive oil. Uh, okay. I've, I always believe in olive oil because it's more medicinal. If okay. you look at the Mediterranean type lifestyle, yeah. they always use olive oil. Yeah. So you can see, like I said, uh, depends on the size of your pan. This is, this is about like three tablespoons of olive oil. Mm -hmm. And I've just added a bit of uh, chili in that as well. A little bit of chili flakes in the olive oil. So again, cooking is a bit like multitasking in a sense because you can see while, while, the, while the oil is uh, being heated up in a pan, I'm, I'm still chopping away. So that, that actually saves time and this is how you can actually prepare uh, quite, quite a nutritional meal in, in within 20 minutes or so. So now I'm just chopping up the, the red onion. Uh, you, you can use also white onions as well, but again, like I said, the, the more colourful it is, the more nutritious it is. And it's also got more flavour, the red colour type of onion. So again, dice it really fine. So as I said, with the fish, um, because there's a Caesar salad, I've actually chopped it into sort of like bite-sized pieces as well. Because the last thing you want to do is try to eat a Caesar salad while you're trying to cut the fish on, on the plate and stuff <laughs> like that. So most of the ingredients on the plate of Caesar salad is going to be like really bite-sized types uh, mm -hmm. pieces. So I'm just going to add the fish now. And what type of fish is this? Sorry, I, I can't remember if you yeah, said Yeah, I've, I've taken salmon, as you can okay. see, salmon pieces. I've just yeah. chopped it up into bite-sized pieces. Uh, but you, you can choose uh, over the weekend when I was sort of like uh, tried it as well, this recipe. I actually added uh, fish. I use fish like haddock as well. Yeah, I was about to say haddock. Yeah, or you can use, if you want smaller fish, you can even use like sardines. Okay. Fresh sardines. Okay. But basically any, any fish that, you know, is quite firm and it doesn't really like fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's just the fish being heated up. Let it cook for a few minutes. And I noticed that you already had it seasoned. Or... Yes, yes. Actually, I, I, I was going to get the fresh uh, fish, but uh, the, the one uh, without seasoning, but the ones in the shop had seasoning, so I thought I'll just try it. Yeah. It's like a Thai type um, okay. seasoning, so it's quite nice as well. Mm -hmm. And then while I'm waiting for it to cook a bit, I'm just going to shut this bit and uh, chop up the mushrooms, which I'm going to add to the salad as well. Oh, I love mushrooms. Yeah. Fun fact, Petrina, I hated mushrooms up until my third pregnancy. Oh, wow, okay. And then mushrooms is what I craved for my whole third pregnancy. She's now seven, she's going to be eight. That's And great. I've loved mushrooms ever since then. Yeah, that's great. M mushrooms, I I've come across some people who actually don't like it for mm. the reason, but mushrooms are actually very high in, like, especially B-complex vitamins. Yeah. And that's really, you know, what you need 
even if you're not pregnant. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you've done a great thing because you know your your child's actually going to be growing up a lot healthier. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm also going to add uh, carrots. Carrots are actually good for the eyes. So I explained mm -hmm. last week. You know, it looks like the eye, this part. So I'm just yeah. going to slice it this way, and just add it to the. Just by just by the way, do you have a favorite type of mushroom that you like? Well, like I said, I, th these ones are chestnut brown chestnut mushrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use the white ones as well, but white ones a bit too common. Yeah. Uh, I prefer like the shiitake mushrooms. Yes, yeah, which are really nice. It's a bit chewy for some, but uh, it's just the way you you cook it or prepare it as well. Yeah. I I normally slice these shiitake mushrooms really fine. Yes. And it doesn't become that chewy. Yeah. And the shiitake mushrooms especially, they are very uh, good for cancer, mm -hmm. preventing cancer. Mm -hmm. So that's why we use it as well. Mm. So the fish is cooking nicely. Uh, I've got like I said the salad. Already prepped. I'm just going to add the carrots. We're going to be cooking the carrots. So I said this Caesar, Caesar salad is just going to be a very colorful type of salad. Mm -hmm. Okay. The mushrooms, I'm going to cook it slightly because a lot of people they don't like it raw, you, although you can eat it raw. Uh, the cucumber, I'm just going to slice it again this way. So the, the cucumber adds a bit to the moisture as well. Yeah. And the idea of eating the Caesar salad is it's a good way to introduce uh, people who like to eat more like meat, protein, mm -hmm. uh, like, like chicken or fish, and then they don't like the vegetables. Mm. So the, the trick about eating the Caesar salad is actually to be putting a bit of um, the, the, the protein, the meat protein, and mix it with, with a mouthful of the yeah. vegetables as well. And you don't actually find that you know the salad's too overwhelming if you're yeah. not used to eating like raw type vegetables. And that's exactly why I started eating Caesar salad because I was on this massive weight loss journey and I have a real resentment towards um, vegetables, mm -hmm. but I found that I can tolerate salads a lot better. Okay. And nice. that's how I started my journey into Caesar salads. That's great. <laughs> so now I've chopped up the the Roman lettuce as well, which gives it a nice crunch. I'm just going to check on the fish. So you can see the fish takes not a lot of yeah. time to cook. It's almost already cooked. So now I'm going to add a bit more of the of the onions and mushrooms as well into the fish. And let it cook for a few more minutes. And really, we're almost done here. I'm just also going to add the halloumi cheese just to heat it up for a while as well. You can actually have the cheese as it is, uh, room temperature. Oh, you really? Want I never have really had it. I've always had it grilled or or uh, air fried. I've yeah, you can it. actually grill it oh. as well if you want to. So that's it. So while waiting for it to cook, I'm just going to chop up the rest of the Caesar salad. Now, when, when I normally order this uh, dish in the restaurant, I find that they tend not to chop the, the, the lettuce up or, or the, the, yeah. the romaine salad uh, leaves up too, too fine. And it's a bit annoying because when you're trying to eat, you haven't cut it. <laughs> so I prefer to just cut it like more smaller, but it's totally up to you how you want it to be done. A bit more spring onions, which I'm going to add to the fish and the what's cooking in the pot as well. So the spring onions again is it is a bit similar to onions, uh, the sulphur family. It, it's good for keeping away, you know, the the bugs and flus, the viruses, things like that. Okay. And I won't be adding too much salt. There's a bit of salt here seasoned salt with a bit of herbs because the fish was already quite quite well seasoned so just a little bit but obviously the salt depends on your taste as well mm. taste buds so give it a bit more stir so chopping up the rest of the romaine Romaine lettuce here, and you can see the plate is pretty full already, very nice. I'm going to also add the croutons, homemade croutons itself. Okay, there you go. And a slice of lemon. I'm going to just add the lemon juice after the hummus. 
to just get a bit of tangy flavor as well. So a sliced lemon here. I'm gonna, um, what I'm gonna do is going to layer this with a bit of hummus before I add the fish on. So that actually gives a nice taste as well. So you can actually, actually make your own homemade hummus or, or get, get the ones in the shop. Mm -hmm. Depends on what you want to put in the thing. So that's there. So the fish is almost done. And yes, the last but not least, going to add a bit of the, the olives as well. Just all mix it all around. Okay. And we're almost done, basically. It smells absolutely divine. Okay. Add a few more of these chopped spring onions. Yep. And lunch or brunch is ready to be served shortly. <laughs> So as you can see, uh, so I'm going to sprinkle this a bit of uh, lemon juice as well. Okay. So that's there. And then we're going to be adding the warm, warm, warmly cooked fish, fish dish with mushrooms. Uh, as I mentioned again, the Caesar salad is really a combination of what, whatever you want to add. So what I've done is I've actually added uh, raw carrots, uh, cucumber with the skin. Again, the carrots I don't peel because, uh, and even the cucumber I don't peel it because the the benefits of the most of the nutrients are actually just under the skin. So never peel the cucumber, never peel the carrots. I've added olives there. Yeah, you can actually, uh, I've just chosen green olives, but you can actually add like uh, black olives as well, depending on what you can get. Uh, hummus and the mixture of various colored salad leaves like spinach, uh, spinach, that there's the purple lettuce, green lettuce, and whatever else you want to eat. And in, in this cooked one is the halloumi, made from goats and sheep's dairy, a bit of mushrooms, chestnut mushrooms, and a bit of fish, fish of your choice. Mm. So that's the dish ready, almost ready. I'm going to uh, just garnish it with a bit of uh, mint leaves from mm -hmm. our garden. You can mm -hmm. actually also select things like coriander leaves as well, mm. or, or chives as you want. But yeah. as you know, I've already got the spring onions, which is similar, similar flavour to chives. Yeah. So, I mean, what I really love about your dishes, Petrina, um, Petrina is the, the ease of them. Mm -hmm. You know, the really, I could just look into the kitchen, see what I have in there, put it all together, um, and it makes a dish, you know, and I think that that is really what eating is about, isn't it? Like we eat to live, not live to eat. So, yes, we can have nice food and yes, it should look all fancy sometimes. But actually, we just really think about fueling our bodies first before we think about, you know, a bit about anything else. And this is what I love most about your dishes. You give me a new way of thinking about the food that we eat. Yes, and like I said, if you followed me enough on this uh, journey, I've, I normally like to add a lot of colour to the, to the yeah. dish itself. So it's the more variety of colours, that the better it is, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah, amazing. So we're just ready to serve now. So what you do is just put the warmish ingredients on top of the salad. And like I said, when you come to taste it, the idea is actually basically just have a bit of everything as much as you can. Yeah. And it will really be great tasting. And this is, uh, you know, it's, it's like a meal on its own as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice thing. You've got protein, you've got the vegetables and yeah. you've, you've got, you know, the variety of vegetables and various nutrients as well. Which is so do, do, do some people actually eat this as a side dish uh, um, um, alongside their main meal? Because I've always eaten it as a main meal. Yeah, I, I would eat it as a main meal, but some people would have maybe have this as a side as a salad. Yeah, mm. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so it looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. Just going to add the, um, the mint leaves. And chop. So right now we have the ingredients of the um, on the screen for everyone who wants to be able to have a chance of creating this. Take a screenshot, write it down, 
but it really is about what you have in your kitchen, as, Pat um, as Patrina said. So we have a, so you have fish of any choice of your own choice, cucumber with the skin on, mushrooms, um, romaine lettuce, watercress, olives, hummus, lemon juice or lime juice, um, salt of your taste, and herbs to really bring it all together. Yes. And I mean, how many minutes was that that you used to create this, Patrina? Not even 10 minutes? I Not don't even think? 10 minutes, exactly, yeah. yeah. So obviously the, the chopping up of the ingredients sometimes takes a bit longer, but it's totally up to you. Like I said, I, I've actually cooked the fish and while, while the fish is being cooked and yeah. the cheese is being uh, warmed up, I've actually started chopping the vegetables. Amazing. So it's not really that great. And and the leaves especially, uh, the, the leaves, the, the mixed salad leaves, like the, you can get like rocket leaves, you get spinach leaves, baby, baby spinach leaves, uh, the mixed chart. Yeah. All these are actually... You know, you can actually get them already in in a packet, mm -hmm. so it's just easy to lay them out as well. Yeah, you you can even add things like celery to get give it more of a crunch as well. Mm. And as you see, the the crotons I've actually made out from just a sort of like dinner bun, a yeah. healthier dinner bun, which has been made from better, better quality flour. Mm. And that that's uh, that, that's a meal itself, which yeah. obviously you you can take. Uh, I I normally like to when when we travel. We normally like to make our own meals as well. Okay. So, for example, last weekend we were away. We actually rented a self-service type accommodation okay. rather than staying in a hotel because the reason why is because we wanted a kitchen mm. where we can actually prepare these sort of meals as well. Okay, well, <laughs> I want to be like you when I grow up, Patrina, because when I go on holiday, I need to have no cooking from my side. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much, Patrina. It's been an absolute pleasure having you with us once again in the kitchen and giving us a different view of how to consume our meals. Mm -hmm.